The U.S. State Department, in its three-volume report on the origins of communism in Russia, published in 1931, reveals how Jewish-controlled German banks, under the leadership of Max Warburg, conspired as early as 1914 to send large payments to Lenin, Trotsky, and others in their attempts to bring down the Tsar. As part of this conspiracy, Jacob Schiff, head of the New York Jewish banking house of Kuhn Loeb, invested at least 20 million, which would be close to $1 billion today, toward the establishment of Bolshevism in Russia. In its article on socialism, the Jewish Encyclopedia, published in 1905, freely admits that Jews in Russia were ripe for revolution. In Russia, it, socialism, has become a movement of the Jewish masses. The later Encyclopedia Judaica tells us the communist movement and ideology played an important part in Jewish life, particularly in the 1920s and 1930s, and during and after World War II. The Judaica, in fact, presents an extensive list of the most powerful Jewish leaders of Bolshevism, which included Trotsky, Sverdlov, Zinoviev, Kamenev, Litvinov, Kaganovich, and many others. The Judaica also tells us just how many Jews filled the communist ranks. It says anti-Semitism drove the bulk of Russian Jewish youth into the ranks of the Bolshevik regime. When the white Russian patriots heroically attempted to regain their freedom from the Jews, the Judaica says compact Jewish masses were utilized by the Bolsheviks to suppress such counter-revolution. Clearly, Jews and native Russians were engaged in a death struggle over the destiny of Russia. Unfortunately, the Jewish masses won. A rare photo shows the First People's Commissariat. From left to right are Yuritsky, Trotsky, Zinoviev, Sverdlov, and Kaganovich, all Jewish. In 1918, intelligence services of the Western powers were buzzing with reports that communism was an international conspiracy fomented by atheistic Jews. British, Dutch, American, and other intelligence reports confirmed that Jews filled the Bolshevik ranks and that as much as 75% of all Soviet commissars were Jewish. In the Illustrated Sunday Herald of February 8, 1920, Sir Winston Churchill commented on what had almost become public knowledge. There is no need to exaggerate the part played in the creation of Bolshevism by these international and, for the most part, atheistical Jews. It is certainly a very great one. In the decades following the revolution, the question became, how much influence do the Jews still exert on the Soviet experiment? Although many of the Jewish kingpins in Bolshevism perished in Stalinist purges in the late 30s, None other than Nikita Khrushchev gives us an eye-opening view of just how many Jews were still in the Soviet government. Speaking to a delegation of French socialists, Khrushchev admitted in 1956 the government has found in some of its departments a heavy concentration of Jewish people, upwards of 50% of the staff. Because communism has historically been top-heavy with Jews, the Soviet policy of so-called anti-Semitism, much protested by Jews in the West, may in reality be but a ploy to distract the world from communism's Jewish past. Although most Jews have indeed been removed from high-profile positions in the Soviet hierarchy over the last 30 years, still Jews remain highly favored when it comes to immigration to the prosperous West. Since World War II, more than a million Jews have been allowed to leave the Iron Curtain, sometimes in waves of up to 52,000 a year. This contrasts to the grim reality that if even one Gentile attempts to escape, he would be lucky to receive only 15 years in prison. Jews, then, have played an enormous role in the Soviet experiment. Yet, as the Jewish Encyclopedia, in its article on socialism, again tells us, the passion of many Jews to socialize the world was not confined to Russia. As peddlers of socialism, it tells us, Jews must be reckoned among the pioneers of the socialist parties in America. As a case in point, a flood of socialistic Jews entered the FDR administration and helped pioneer the New Deal for America. The 
Encyclopedia Judaica says Roosevelt's liberal policies endeared him to the Jewish community, which shared with him an overriding commitment to the welfare state. It is very significant that in letting left-wing Jews into his administration, FDR set in motion a conspiracy that was soon to have the gravest repercussions. <laughs> 